Hello everyone, this is Goosebumps Godzilla, and we have recently hit 155 subscribers. So I want to thank you guys so much for letting us hit 155 subscribers right now. Well, at this current point in time, this could change in the future. It could increase or decrease, but at this current point in time, we have hit 155 subscribers. And I want to thank you guys so much for all the support you've given to this channel. I can't believe it. It's under a year, and we have just hit 155 subscribers. I want to thank you guys so much again. I'm so happy about this. Uh, again, thank you guys so much. But anyway, in my last video, I asked my viewers, due to us hitting 155 subscribers, to comment in the comment section, Goosebumps fights they'd like me to talk about. And so we got a lot of comments for this one. I can't believe it. Um, but I'm basically going to be going over each one and basically talking about the fights. This will probably be long because we got, again, a lot of comments on this thing. Um, but I'm going to try to do this as quickly as possible. But first, let's start out with a comment from the Lego Reaper. And that is the Werewolf of Theater Swamp versus the Body Squeezers. And so, pretty much, um, before we get into the fight, just going to give a little information on each character. Not going to be spoilers for any of the monsters unless I accidentally say something. But pretty much, uh, you're good for the most part. So let's take a look at the Werewolf of Fever Swamp first. So the Werewolf of Fever Swamp is basically your average werewolf. I mean, in the cover, he lo does look like a wolf, you know, sort of thing. And so he doesn't seem to be as powerful, though. He gets beat by an oversized dog, which is pretty bad considering, you know, he's a werewolf. So power-wise, Werewolf of Fever Swamp is really not there. He's just too weak. In the book, I'm not going to get into too much spoilers, but he gets beaten very easily by a natural creature, not a supernatural creature. He, he just gets beaten so easily, and while he is intelligent, as revealed from the end of the book that I'm not going to talk about, but pretty much it's kind of revealed that the werewolf can think by itself and actually is very intelligent and can actually choose on who it wants to attack. So that means that these the Werewolf Fever Swamp is incredibly intelligent. Basically, your average human intelligence and all that stuff. So, really, the Werewolf Fever Swamp, while not being that powerful, easily beaten by natural forces. And so, power-wise, not really there. But intelligence-wise, he's pretty smart for a supernatural being in the Goosebumps universe. And so now, let's take a look at the Body Squeezers. So, the Body Squeezers have only appeared... In Invasion of the Body Squeezers Part 1 and 2 and Revenge of the Body Squeezers, pretty much. I don't think the ones in Invasion of the Body Squeezers appeared in the Revenge of the Body Squeezers since I was a different species. But pretty much, um, their powers is that they're um, super intelligent. I mean, super intelligent. So pretty much, while well, the way they get to Earth seems very primitive, they go to Earth on comets, which is... You know, it seems very primitive, and it seems like the aliens are not that intelligent, but they clearly are from the events of the book. They stage an entire massive invasion on a town in the United States, and only one person knows about it the entire time. Everyone else in the book is completely oblivious to the alien invasion that's going on, and they're doing this super quickly and super efficiently, and we even have their leader, who is incredibly intelligent, and is even able to trick the main protagonist. These guys are super smart and seem to be planning um, the events of that book for a long period of time due to um, the main protagonist's neighbor, which I'm not going to get too much detail on. And so, really, the body squeezers are super smart, but they're also very, very, uh, how do you say this? Um, powerful as well. I mean, if you take a look at the cover art, there seems like they're just dragging kids all around. Um, they also have the superpower of when they squeeze people, they take over their body, which would be really hard for Oral Fever Swamp to avoid. So pretty much, if the body squeezer gets a hand, it gets hands on the Werewolf of Fever Swamp, then pretty much the Werewolf Fever Swamp will either be killed or be transformed. You can see in the actually the cover art to Invasion of the Body Squeezers, you can see a dog biting the body squeezer, and the body squeezers are obviously just shrugging it off. And dogs are very similar to wolves, and a dog did beat um, the Werewolf Fever Swamp, 
um, in the Werewolf Fever Swamp, so it seems really likely that the Body Squeezer will win. So now I'm going to tell you why I think that. Because the Body Squeezer seems to be more intelligent than your average human since they were able to take over a town without anyone knowing about it except for one kid who is very lucky. And so that is a huge piece of evidence. And that kid who knew what was going on was still tricked. I mean, the body squeezers are super intelligent, far more intelligent than your average human, and most likely a whole lot more intelligent than the Werewolf of Fever Swamp. Also, there is the problem for the Werewolf of Fever Swamp of strength. I mean, he gets beaten super easy in the Werewolf of Fever Swamp book, and so the fact that he's beaten so easily in the book, and the body squeezers are so powerful, I mean, their bodies... Um, went through the Earth's atmosphere without anything bad happening to him. No scratches or anything. That just shows how powerful the body squeezers are. So, I'm obviously going to give the point to the body squeezers for this one. They obviously win the fight because, you know, they're just more durable and more intelligent. And I don't really see in any way the world Fever Swamp could win. If it takes place in Fever Swamp... The werewolf would have the advantage of home terrain, but I don't even think that would affect the fight. So, pretty much the answer to that question, the Lego Reaper, is that the body squeezers will win. And so next, let's take a look at the horrors versus the clowns from A Nightmare on Clown Street. And this comment is from Andrew Cooper. And so, first let's take a look at the horrors. So the horrors are the employees at the horror amusement park called... Horrorland, and we never really get an idea of their power, and so you expect, just judging from the design, that they're pretty powerful, um, but we never get a clear example of this, and they're, I guess, your average monsters thing. They are super intelligent, though I will give them that for, you know, having human intelligence, they're able to communicate with humans for, and so that's incredibly intelligent for your average monster, and so they're... There's really not that much to go over for the Horrorland Horrors, except for one huge weakness for the Horrors. They are decently intelligent, and I guess they're decently strong, but basically, if you pinch, you know, the Horrorland Horrors, then they deflate, and they're pretty much dead. So, I think that they're pretty powerful. I think they're decently powerful, but I don't think they're that powerful, just judging from that huge weakness that they have, that could be a huge disadvantage in this fight. And that's all I really want to go over them. Very simple. They basically have your average monster strength and weaknesses, stuff like that, except when you pinch them, they deflate. And so that is a huge weakness again. So next, let's take a look at the clowns from Nightmare on Clown Street. So, there are a bunch of clowns shown in a Nightmare on Clown Street. So, while they don't have the strength in numbers, most likely, because the Horrorland Horrors, there's a whole lot of Horrorland Horrors, it seems like. And so, I think the Horrorland Horrors do have an advantage in numbers, but, I mean, the clowns from Nightmare on Clown Street just seem super powerful, because one of the people in the clown group is really good at throwing knives, and who knows how many other talents are in this clown group, and... You know, also, there's the fact that, um, most likely, the clowns won't be terrified of that many things. After all, they're clowns, and clowns are terrifying, but that's not really a huge thing. But, you know what I mean. The clowns should not be as terrified as they should, because they had some horrifying experiences in uh, A Nightmare on Clown Street itself, which means they could be more used to this. And plus, all they have to do is pinch the horrors, so there's that huge piece of evidence. So, overall, I think the clowns from Nightmare on Clown Street have this because they have one person who's really good at throwing knives, and just so many other clowns, most likely, that have so many different powers and stuff like that. While the horrors should be pretty powerful, all you have to do is pinch them and they're gone. So, I think the answer to that question is that the clowns from a Nightmare on Clown Street would prove to be victorious. And so next, let's take a look at one from Crafting Gaming. And so we're actually going to be doing a collaboration with him. His other YouTube channel is uh, SlappyTube if you want to check out his channel. But pretty much he has the question for 
the Slappy versus the Creeps. And so, first, let's take a look at each character, as I've done with the rest of them. So, Slappy, the most popular Goosebumps monster. And so, it will be taking a long time to go over his power, so I'm just going to sum it up in very short words and stuff like that. Pretty much, Slappy can do anything he wants. He can go from one place to another, as revealed in the Goosebumps film. His mouth can spew out eternal amounts of cockroaches. He can spew out burning green slime. He can cause things to levitate. Um, from the earth, he can cause other things to come to life, and also he's really intelligent, he's one of the most intelligent Goosebumps monsters of all time, huge advantage in this battle, and, you know, he's uh, slappy, that's pretty much all you need to know. You can't kill him as well, if you crack his body open or something like that, he'll just come back to life, either take over your body, or become a ghost, which is an even more powerful form than before. And so, that's pretty much sloppy. You can't beat him. You can say that magic words that put him back to sleep. Karu, Marie, Odana, Loma, Milano, Karanu. But, I mean, you can't say those words, but he always comes back, even when people do say that. So, either it just takes a little while for him to wake back up, or maybe someone else brings him back to life on an instant but, you know, there is that huge thing that could easily stop uh, Sloppy, and that is the magic words. But that would only stop him for a short period of time. But it doesn't seem like he wants to take revenge sometimes. Maybe he does, but it's never really shown when he comes back to life that he wants to take revenge. Because we've actually never had a recurring owner of Sloppy that appeared in an I Living Dummy sequel, actually. But... That's pretty much Sloppy, you know, he's super powerful, he's super intelligent, even tricked me when I watched Goosebumps 2 Haunted Halloween in that one particular scene that I mentioned in one of my previous VS Fight videos, but, you know, Sloppy is super intelligent, and he's super overpowered. Um, but anyway, let's take a look at the Creeps. So the Creeps most likely have a huge amount of physical strength, I mean... It just seems like it due to their lizard forms and all that stuff, but we do know that they are super intelligent. We haven't really got a chance to see the creeps in action, but it seems like, you know, that they are pretty powerful due to them wanting to cause a fight between humanity. And also, in another Goosebumps book, Don't Go to Sleep, we have another lizard humanoid monster that's able to easily crush cars. So it seems like this could be the same case with the creeps. Also, they are super intelligent. They are able to go on Earth and pretty much um, try to start a whole invasion. They're not that intelligent, not slappy level intelligence. Because, I mean, in certain points in the book, it's pretty obvious that one of the main protect one of the main characters is not a creep. And they just keep on believing he's a creep no matter what. And, you know, that's not a super powerful power-up for the creeps to have. And it kind of proves that they're not that smart. After all, a little 12-year-old boy just outsmarts them all the time so they're pretty intelligent but not intelligent enough but they do have the advantage in numbers and technology and all that stuff which could easily work to their advantage and all that stuff so there is that and so again you haven't seen them use their physical strength but they seem super um strong not as intelligent but Pretty intelligent, but who would win in a fight? Hmm, well, I mean, I'm kind of split, honestly, because while Sloppy, I think, could beat a whole lot of the creeps, the creeps do have the advantage of having so many, much technology. And also, there's the fact that, as revealed in The Ghost of Sloppy, Sloppy has his own Wikipedia page, and that, I believe, does expose his weakness. And so, if that if it takes that low level of research for the creeps into them having a whole lot of technology, then that would mean that they could easily just say the magic words and put Sloppy back to sleep. But they'd have to do that really fast because Sloppy could just disappear, reappear, outsmart them. He could do a whole lot of things. But overall, I honestly think the creeps could win due to them just looking up the magic words that put him back to sleep. But then again, Sloppy could come after him, but then they could just rec retreat to their home planet 
and most likely Slappy's never been in space, and so you never know where the play, uh, the creeps are. But then again, he's super intelligent, so I'm kind of split on this one. And Sloppy would just come back to life and maybe want revenge. I'm not even sure if he would want revenge or not. But I just honestly say the creeps would win this one, not because they appear in my favorite Goosebumps book, but just because they have better technology. And while Sloppy's more intelligent than them and could easily outsmart them, I just think that the creeps could just win because of my numbers and technology. But if it was just one-on-one -on -one Sloppy versus Creep, obviously Sloppy would utterly annihilate the creep. Um, but anyway, so let's take a look at a comment from Monster Blood. He's another Goosebumps channel. I'd highly recommend you to check out his channel. Make some really great videos. But anyway, um, his VS fight is the giant balloon spider from Goosebumps 2 Haunted Halloween versus the giant praying mantis. And so, the giant balloon spider had a brief appearance in Goosebumps 2 Haunted Halloween. So we really don't get a good look at all his powers and stuff like that. But pretty much, he's an animatronic spider that was brought to life by Slappy. And he's made up of a whole lot of balloons. And that's pretty much all we get. I guess he's just average powers and stuff like that. So we really don't get a good look at him and all that stuff. But there's uh, the giant balloon spider. And then next we have the giant praying mantis from Shocker on Shock Street. Now, th he has, or she, I don't know what the giant praying mantis is. But pretty much the giant praying mantis is, you know, a giant praying mantis from a Shocker on Shock Street. I'm going to be using his movie design just because um, his book design is smaller. So I'm just going to do the movie size because that one's bigger and stuff like that. Pretty much, the, as said in the title of the monster's name, you know, giant praying mantis, he's a giant praying mantis. But also the giant praying mantis can fly. And can spew out black acid or something like that that is sticky, I believe. And can make its enemies get stuck to the black goo. And so, that would be a huge advantage in this fight. There's not really that much I can talk about these two because, you know, they've only made brief appearances. But, overall, I would say the giant praying mantis would win this. That's because the giant balloon spider is made up of balloons. But I don't really know if that would affect that much due to him also being partly animatronic and stuff like that. But that would mean that the movements would be most likely limited. Since he's a Halloween decoration, he can't move as much as, you know, the giant praying mantis do, can do. While he is a robot in the book, he probably was made with a whole lot more money and budget behind him. Which means he can move a whole lot more. Also, the giant praying mantis can fly. And so he could just fly in the air and just constantly throw that black acid at the giant balloon spider till he's completely stuck and then deal the finishing blow completely destroying giant balloon spider and i believe the um giant praying man is, is capable of doing this due to him in the goosebumps film i believe crushing an entire car and also the giant praying man is, does have the advantage of speed and giant balloon spider kind of seems slower just it seems like at least, and so, and the Giant Praying Mantis is able to keep up with the car, so I believe overall that Giant Praying Mantis would win a fight against the Giant Balloon Spider from, um, Goosebumps to Haunted Halloween. But anyway, guys, let's take a look at another comment from Horror Channel Reviews, another great Goosebumps channel, technically speaking, I believe every week he reviews a Goosebumps book. Highly recommend that channel as well. Makes some great videos. But anyway, so his fight is the mummy versus the barking ghost. And so, um, the there are two different mummies in the Goosebumps universe, but I'm going to be using the more popular one, and that is Prince Koru versus the barking ghost. And so pretty much Prince Koru had a brief appearance in The Return of the Mummy. But pretty much he's your average mummy. He kind of walks slowly and stuff like that. But it's kind of implied that he has superhuman strength. It just seems like, after all, the other mummy in the Goosebumps universe, Aerogotus, who appeared in Dummy Meets the Mummy, is able to rip off someone's beard. And so we are led to believe that Prince Koru may have the same powers 
but Prince Koru is also very slow due to him being undead, and most likely very fragile due to him being mummy and over and thousands and thousands of years old. We don't really know if he has any superpowers or not, you know, like magical abilities and all that. But I highly doubt so since he's been dead for such a long time. But Prince Koru does have the advantage of intelligence. After being asleep for thousands of years, he suddenly wakes up and has the same has memories of all the way back in ancient Egypt. And so, pretty much, there is that. And also, there's slight disadvantage because all he wants to do is rest in peace. So, I mean, uh, I don't really see this fight happening in the first place. But then again, I think this could actually happen. Maybe the Bargain Ghost would bring back to life Prince Koru. That could work, and you'll want vengeance. That's what he sort of did in Return of the Mummy. So there is that. So this fight could easily take place, it seems like, if the Barking Ghost want to bring uh, Prince Koru to life. But that's pretty much all you need to know for Prince Koru. He's pretty much your average mummy. I think he has superhuman strength due to the other mummy having some. But he's also very intelligent, it seems like, due to him recovering all his memory after thousands of years. So... You know, there is the dis disadvantage, though, of not being physically strong enough because, you know, he's weakened, he's thousands of years old and all that stuff. So there is that. Let's take a look now at the Barking Ghost. So the Barking Ghost were originally humans, meaning that they were or are super intelligent, able actually to trick the main protagonist and the main protagonist's friend in the book. So a lot of intelligence right there. And so pretty much they were cursed by someone or something that led them to become ghost dogs and so this would lead you to believe that they have your average ghost powers most likely the same powers as the ones from ghost camp due to it seeming like they're confined in one area and that is somewhere in Maine I believe in some forest in Maine and so uh, due to that I could see how um, this fight could play out, and I would honestly say the Barking Ghost could win. They will have the advantage of home terrain, since the Barking Ghost cannot leave the area that they're in. Also, they have human intelligence, and possibly more intelligence than Prince Koru, or the same, you know, uh, whichever one you believe is correct. But also, there are two Barking Ghosts, which means they have the advantage of numbers. Also, they have advantage of being ghost. Uh, Prince Koru is your just average solid zombie like being and he's more fragile and stuff like that and the ghost dogs can pretty much go through him and he can't really kill them meaning that most likely um, uh, they cannot be hurt and so overall I think the mummy will be automatically destroyed uh, leading to a victory for the barking ghost. And so, that's why I believe that they have the advantage of home terrain, their ghost. The mummy is solid, which means he can easily be beaten. So, again, overall, I believe that uh, the victor for this battle would be the ghost dog. But anyway, guys, let's take a look at our next comment. And that is from Dexter Hinch. And so, he wanted to have a fight between Slappy and... And the clown from the Most Wanted series, which is Murder the Clown. And so, I would say, since we've already gone over each of these monsters, uh, Murder the Clown's one of the clowns from uh, A Nightmare on Clown Street. So, you know, I've pretty much already gone over them. But overall, I think Slappy would win. The, Murder the Clown does have the advantage of having a bunch of friends. Um, in his clown group, and one of them, again, has the skill to throw knives and stuff like that, but I don't think that could compare to Sloppy's power. Sloppy could just freeze them all in place, and then it, the fight would probably be over. Then he'd have a bunch of slaves and all that stuff, and I don't really see how Mur the Clown could win in any way. Maybe he could just look up Sloppy's name and then say the magic words, but then Sloppy would just come back to life and all that, so... I don't really see any way that Murder the Clown and the other clowns from A Nightmare on Clown Street could be victorious in any way, because Sloppy would just freeze them all in time, shoot out a bunch of cockroaches, do pretty much anything he wants. So, overall, 
I say the victor to this fight would be Slappy. And so now it is time for another fight from Miku Villa Real. I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing that wrong. But pretty much she commented on a Goosebumps fight, and that is the Body Squeezers versus Monster Blood. And so Monster Blood, um, uh, I have not gone over, I've already gone over Body Squeezers, but pretty much Monster Blood is this green goo that grows and grows and grows, and pretty much nothing can stop it other than it expires or something like that. So that's really all there is between the Monster Blood. It's very simple but effective com concept, and I'm telling you, all the Monster Blood books are really great. I enjoyed every single one of them. My least favorite is Monster Blood 1, but I'm getting off topic. And so, who do I think would win the fight, though? The Body Squeezers or Monster Blood? I would have to say Monster Blood because you can't hurt Monster Blood. It's not like it can be hurt. You can try to punch it or destroy it or anything like that. Maybe the Body Squeezers would get lucky. And, you know, the uh, Body uh, the Monster Blood would expire. But that probably wouldn't last for a long period of time. And so, the Body Squeezers would have to try to stop it by then. And... By the time the monster blood expires, they'd probably be drowned in the monster blood's goo and stuff like that. Unless one of them eats it. If one of them eats it, then they could try to fight the monster blood and maybe be, be, be victorious in that. But then, you know, the body squeezer would just keep on growing and they would suffocate in space most likely. But then again, they rode on rockets. So, I mean, that's not a fair statement. So I could see a scenario where the body squeezers could win, but I think overall Monster Blood would win just because you can't stop Monster Blood no matter what. Even if you're giant, maybe you could eat all of the Monster Blood, but possibly at that point you could explode or something like that. But I would just give this fight to Monster Blood because it's just more powerful than the body squeezers. Even though the body squeezers are really powerful enough, they're intelligence or anything that like that could possibly stop monster blood that i know of and next let's take a look at the ghost dog versus andrew crawl from andrew cooper and so i already went over the ghost dog and then we have andrew crawl so basically he lost his head and he's searching an entire haunted house for that head i believe andrew crawl can leave that haunted house, though, due to him appearing in Goosebumps, the board game, Terror in the Graveyard, I believe. And in that game, he was outside of the haunted house. He was actually the main antagonist of the game. So overall, he can leave the haunted house. So that would mean that the advantage of home terrain would go to the ghost dogs. And so both of them have your average powers, but I think the ghost dog is more intelligent then Andrew Craw, because it outsmarted, um, who was it, uh, the main protagonist, a main protagonist friend in, um, uh, The Barking Ghost, and, you know, Andrew Craw is about the same age as the main protagonist from The Barking Ghost, so that means he might have the same intelligence, maybe a little bit more or something like that, but overall, he would have almost the same intelligence. And plus, the ghost dog has the advantage of home terrain, meaning that he could easily win. Also, they maybe could have the advantage of surprise. Andrew Craw, all he wants is his long-lost head, meaning that he has no other ulterior motives. The ghost dogs do, which could lead to them having a surprise attack on him, since Andrew Craw's only goal is to find his head, and unless the ghost dogs have it, then he probably wouldn't mess with them at all. So I would say the Ghost Dogs would be victorious in this fight due to them being more intelligent and all that stuff. But I don't know, it's a toss-up since they're both ghosts. But due to the Ghost Dogs being a bit more intelligent, I would give this fight to the Ghost Dogs. And so next, let's take a look from a comment by Fandom Fanboy, who wanted to have a fight between Slappy and Dr. Maniac. And also another channel... Joking also asked. He is um, one of my regular viewers, and so is Fandom Fanboy. And so, pretty much, they both asked for Slappy versus 
Dr. Maniac. And so I've already went over Slappy. So let's take a look at Dr. Maniac. Dr. Maniac first appeared in uh, Dr. Maniac vs. Robbie Shorts. And he doesn't really have any superpowers. It seems like he does have the ability to fly, I believe. But that's pretty much it. He mainly gets his powers from his immense intelligence, it seems like. Since he knows all the weaknesses to most of his heroes, including his arch nemesis. Also, he's even able to basically, what was it? Uh, I'm so sorry, guys. I just forgot what I was going to say. But pretty much, he's super smart. He knows the weakness to his arch nemesis. And so, you know, that doesn't seem like much because, you know, it's his arch nemesis. But even the creator, I believe, of his arch nemesis didn't even know... Uh, the Purple Rage's weakness, which is a huge way of showing Dr. Maniac's intelligence. Also, he's able to form alliances with the Purple Rage's arch nemesis. And so, if that's the case, and the Purple Rage is very hard to negotiate with, he gets angry all the time. And so, if that is the case, that just shows how intelligent Dr. Maniac is. And also, he does have the um, power of flight as well. Possibly some other powers, maybe he has super strength or something like that. But he does have low stamina, it seems like, due to a super sneeze sending him flying on his back. But that just could be because it's the super hot power and all that stuff. But I would honestly give Dr. Mayak pretty powerful power-wise. He's not the most powerful Goosebumps monster by any means, but he is super incredibly intelligent. And I believe he would be right up there with Slappy. But how would he face Slappy in a fight? I mean, there is a scenario where Slappy could lose his fight. I believe Slappy would most likely win in a one-on-one -on -one fight if Slappy is focused. Now, in most of the modern Goosebumps books especially, Slappy's more of a show-off a bit. You know, he constantly brags about himself. I mean, he is really powerful, so he can pretty much do whatever he wants. So, he's... You know, kind of getting a little prideful with himself and stuff like that. And also, there could be a scenario like my friend Slappy with this fight between Dr. Maniac. Because, well, I'm not going to get into too many details on the book. Especially since that one's a newer one. Pretty much in that book, he became his best friends with this kid. Because they both were evil and crazy and stuff like that, pretty much. And that is huge. Pretty much, it's kind of weird for Sloppy's character in the book. And he's really crazy about this best friend thing. I'm not kidding. It, it seems so out of character for Sloppy. I really love the book, but it's super out of character for Sloppy. And it's really weird. And this scenario could play out with Dr. Maniac, since he's crazy and stuff like that. And Sloppy could be best friends with him, sort of like in my friend Sloppy. Also, it could end up... That Sloppy just becomes prideful and he's just toying with Dr. Maniac till Dr. Maniac says the magic word to him having an immense knowledge of all his, uh, you know, villains and stuff like that. And since all you have to do is look up Sloppy on Wikipedia, which I believe Dr. Maniac could easily do, he could just say the magic words which would temporarily defeat Sloppy. So, if this is the case, then I could see some scenarios where... Dr. Maniac could win this fight, but overall, I say the fight goes to Sloppy due to him just being more powerful and all this stuff, but if Sloppy gets a little cocky and stuff like that, and, you know, doc Dr. Maniac could use this to advantage to say the magic words, or it could end up like a My Friend Sloppy scenario where Sloppy's just automatically best friends with him, and Dr. Maniac could defeat him that way, but... Overall, Sloppy, I believe, would be victorious, so that is the answer to that question. And so next, let's take a look at a comment from Muhammad Ali Amran Ch I'm sorry, I can't pr pronounce that channel name. But pretty much, he asked me to do a battle thing for King Jelly Jam versus The Blob. And so... King Jelly Jam has only appeared in the 33rd Goosebumps book, the horror ad camp Jelly Jam, and he is pretty powerful. Um, he's able to kill kids. Um, that's pretty much all he does in the book is just eat kids. 
and we don't really get that much book time for him. He barely even is in the book. But from what we do have, he does stink, which is a huge advantage. This could, you know, distract the other opponent and bring him back and all that stuff. So there is that. And again, we don't get that much of him, but he does have this huge weakness of if he's not washed, then he dies, which is a huge disadvantage. And then there's the blob. And so the blob also had very short time in his book the blob that ate everyone or pretty much he ate a whole entire town in a quick amount of time and pretty much all but one child was left i mean the blob is pretty brutal in the short screen time that not screen time but you know the short time that he was in the book he was pretty brutal and also it seems like he doesn't have a sense of smell which you know, means that Jelly Jam's whole vent with the bad smell thing wouldn't really work. And while King Jelly Jam would be more intelligent than the Blob, you can't really stop the Blob. It would just keep coming. And the Blob can't feel pain. And if he just leaves King Jelly Jam alone and keeps, you know, people from washing him, then he's going to die anyways. So I just think overall that... The Blob would most likely win his fight against King Jelly Jam. Okay, and let's take a look at our next fight. Um, I'm so sorry, guys. I'm reading the comment section right now. There's so many comments. So please forgive me if I accidentally miss one. Okay, so I think we're down actually to our final comment. And this one is from Goosebumps Completionist, who also recently hit, I believe, 150 subscribers. And so, basically, he got the biggest fight out of all these, I believe. And he's got multiple Goosebumps monsters going head-to-head. -head. And that is the Shaggy Kaiju form, which means he's in a giant monster form. Um, from Here Comes Shaggy versus the Giant Praying Mantis from Shocker on Shock Street. Also, one thing I forgot to mention, make sure to check out Goosebumps Completionist channel. He also makes some great videos anyway. Um, you know, <laughs> I'm so sorry, guys. Um, versus the Giant Praying Bandits from Shocker on Shock Street. Versus Cuddles the Hamster um, from Monster Blood 2. Versus the Blob from the Blob that everyone. And also, he followed up that comment with something saying that I could add in some bigger Goosebumps monsters like Giant Slappy from... The Goosebumps Live on Stage, um, Stage Play, or something like that. Goosebumps Live on Stage Screenplay, or whatever the book is. I just recently read the book, like, in December or so. Really great book. Highly recommend it. But pretty much, let's go over each of these monsters. So the Shaggy from Here Comes the Shaggy. The Shaggy is a pretty powerful Goosebumps monster. He doesn't get that much book time as... A lot of the other these, a lot of other monsters on the list do like the giant praying mantis doesn't get that much. Cuddles the hamster doesn't get that much, and the blob that everyone doesn't get that much, and giant sloppy doesn't get that much book time either. So all these monsters really do not get that much book time in their books. But pretty much the shaggy is pretty powerful. I mean, he's able to lift up a monster and throw it long distances, and that monster is about. His same weight, I believe. So that would prove to be a huge advantage. And also, since the Shaggy will most likely not leave the swamp, that would be his home terrain. And so the fight would most likely have to happen in the Shaggy swamp because all the rest of these monsters could appear anywhere. So there's not, you know, they won't leave that area. And so the fight would most likely have to happen in the Kai, not the Kaiju. I'm sorry, the Shaggy's home terrain. Which means that the Shaggy um, would have the advantage of home terrain. I'm so sorry, I'm repeating myself. It's getting pretty late. Um, but anyways, the Shaggy does have the advantage of home terrain. But that's pretty much it. We don't get that much book time, as I've already said, of the Shaggy. But from what we do get, he's pretty powerful. Can throw monsters long distances. And also is pretty intelligent. Um, he has human form. And so that means he most likely has about human level intelligence, which could be a huge advantage in this fight, 
especially since some of the rest of these monsters do not have that much intelligence level or are mainly chaotic monsters. And so, anyway, that's pretty much the Shaggy. So, I've already touched on the giant praying mantis. You know, he's got the superpowers, I guess, of flying and spewing out that black goo, and he's basically a giant praying mantis. You can also reach speeds of a car, so, you know, the giant praying mantis, that's all there really is to him. And Cuddles the Hamster. Now, this is my favorite Goosebumps monster. And so, pretty much, Cuddles the Hamster is your average animal intelligence, so he's really not that smart. Um, but he does make up with that with his size. I mean, he almost smothered a giant main protagonist in Monster Blood 2. He was a giant, and he almost smothered and killed um, the main protagonist in the Monster Blood books in his appearance in Monster Blood 2. And so there is that huge advantage for Kyle the Hamster of uh, being a giant hamster. Also, he seems to have fighting skills. I mean, um, a giant Evan went in a fight against Cuddles, and Cuddles has been in a cage all of his life, pretty much, and he was able to beat Evan, who most likely would have a lot more fighting experience. And while he could be bigger than Evan still, I mean, Evan should have some tactical advantage of that fight just from experience. But Evan really did not stand a chance against uh, Cuddles a Hamster, and so I believe that is a huge advantage for Cuddles a Hamster in this fight, and he also just seems to be slightly intelligent, not all the way, but he does constantly seem in the book to want to uh, get, um, what's his name, uh, the main protagonist, in trouble, and all that stuff, and he seems decently smart, also he seems like to be pretty fast in my personal opinion, I haven't read the book in a long time. It's one of my favorite Goosebumps books of all time, Monster Blood 2. But I haven't read that one in a little while. But I could have sworn he is pretty fast in the book, despite his size. So, you know, there's Cuddles the Hamster. And so next is the Blob. We already went over the Blob. Giant mass. And he's not that smart, but you really can't stop him that much. And then there's Giant Slappy, which is Slappy, but he's giant. So... Anyway, let's take a look at this. So, I think the Shaggy would go down first. He's smaller in size compared to the rest of these monsters. And while he is super intelligent, I believe he would be able to bring down Slappy. Because he, in his human form, he is obsessed with monsters. And so, since it's easy to look up, you know, Slappy's powers and all that stuff and his weakness, all he could say is Karumari O'Donnell, Loma Milano Karanu, since most likely he has done research since. Uh, in his human form, he is obsessed with monsters. And if he says those magic words and Sloppy's put back to sleep, I know this would bring Sloppy back to life eventually, but by then, possibly the monster blood is expired because he Sloppy is giant Sloppy only because he ate monster blood. And that monster blood could possibly expire by the time Sloppy comes back. So... Due to him really coming ba back after a little period of time, possibly time enough for the monster blood to expire, and him not being qualified for the fight since he's not giant. So, um, I think the Shaggy would be able to defeat Slappy since he can talk in his monster form and all that stuff, and he's intelligent enough to know Slappy's weakness and all that. So, I think the Shaggy would be able to beat giant Slappy, but he would also be beaten by the giant praying mantis. I mean, the giant praying mantis can just fly in the air and just start spewing out this acid and stuff like that. That the Shaggy will not be able to defeat. And I think, though, the Cuddles hamster would be able to beat the giant praying mantis because he does seem to have a lot of speed in the book. I don't think we get him running in Monster Blood 2 in his giant form. But definitely in a small form, he was very a easily able to outrun the main protagonist, Evan, I believe. And so he's got intelligence enough to know when to dodge the acid, that the sticky acid that the giant praying mantis is spewing out while he's in the air. So the Cuddles hamster could just continuously dodge it. And then when the, you know, the giant praying mantis gets worn out, Cuddles Hamster can just go in and smother the giant praying mantis to death. So, honestly, I believe Cuddles Hamster would win in that sense for the fight. 
And so now, finally, it's time for the ultimate matchup. Cuddles the Hamster versus the Blob. This is still the same fight. I kind of made it out. Sorry, guys. It, as if that was a different fight. But pretty much all that's left is Cuddles the Hamster versus the Blob. And so, overall, I think that the Blob would win this. I mean, the Blob... While not having that much intelligence, you can't really stop. Kells Hamster could try to hit it, smother it, whatever. It would, he would just fall through the slime or, you know, just get eaten alive by the blob. And even in Goosebumps film, he's, the blob is described to be more like monster blood, actually. And you can't really stop monster blood. And maybe if the blob eats... I'm not the blob, but Kells Hamster eats the blob... Mainly that, maybe that can change things, but I don't know, I don't think you can really stop the Blob in any way, so, I think the Blob would win, and I think maybe that's why in the Goosebumps film, Slappy put the Blob out last, I don't know, it's just a little theory that I have in my head that I created while, you know, preparing for this video, is that maybe that's why Slappy put out the Blob last, because don't you think that would have been smart if you wanted to kill Stein originally, if you know, he just put out the blob, and the blob would end it, but why did he do it only at the end of the film? Unless he, you know, he thought it as a threat to his power. Possibility, since the blob is super powerful, but that's still a possibility. I'm not saying that's 100%. I highly doubt that's 100%. Um, but, you know, it's just a little thing to come up with. But, anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, comment down below. What do you think about these fights? Obviously, you may not be able to comment on every single one, but at least comment if you want to on Goosebumps Completionist comment on this giant monster battle. But anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed. And again, thank you guys so much for 155 subscribers. I cannot believe it, and I thank you guys so much for that. And anyway, guys, that's the end of my video, and I hope you guys enjoyed my latest uh, video.